All right, welcome back. Now in this session, I'm gonna show you how to make this part into this part. So this is the first part that we have fixed and we got the screw that we wanna place in here. Okay, this is a socket head cap screw and this is the correct size for it. So remember, I used my wizard when I created this. So my wizard knew exactly how to drill this hole using this point to make sure that this fits in there. So this better fits in here, otherwise, our wizard is not working correctly. All right, so let's go ahead and get started on that. So this is a half an inch cap, uh, socket head cap screw that I believe is a one inch long from the here to here. All right, so let's go ahead and mate those. So I'm gonna click on mate. Okay, your mate option will pop up and we'll be going over some of these in uh, very detail. So one of the first things I want to do is to mate this part, this circular part, the handle of the screw to this part right here because they're both circles and I want to make sure that they're both basically one inside the other okay so I'm gonna click on the screw and make sure that it shows up over here now I accidentally have a point now remember if you read what this says it says 0. 0.6 I don't want a point okay so click on that and click on delete and then select this surface right here now we'll say face and you want to make sure that it says face and then also the second one I'm gonna do is uh, this one now as soon as i click on it my screw will move according to here so i'm going to click on it real quick and boom you're going to see the screw straighten out and it's always going to give you the concentric so that's what i'm trying to do is give you the uh, making it concentric now you're going to have this uh, options appear right next to your feature so you can actually move this around by clicking on the gray and move it around you can actually lock rotation if you like uh, you can change it you can make this parallel to this uh, or perpendicular to it, you can make it uh, coincidental to it, you can lock two components together so they can't be moved, you can create a distance between this feature and this feature. Now a lot of them don't make sense but you actually are able to do them, uh, especially an angle, you can create an angle between this surface and this surface. But the main reason we usually do two circular surfaces like this together is to use the concentric feature right here. Okay. So once you're done with here, click on the OK over here or the OK over here. But go ahead and click over here. You can also click the undo button over here and it will undo that. If you actually click the flip mate alignment, it will flip the screw upside down. So not all the time you're going to be able to mate these together and for the screw to just align itself in here. Now that just happens to be that way because of the location of the screw. Okay, so if the location of the screw was upside down to begin with, it's going to bring it like this and place it like this. But there's a reverse uh, alignment feature, which is really nice, that will allow you to fix the alignment of the part in the correct manner. Okay, so now that you're done with your first mate, click on OK. Now I'm going to show you something over here real quick that says underdefined at the bottom. Now, both the, the, the assembly drawing or uh, assembly section will always be underdefined until you cannot move any of the components. Now, you may not want that all the time, but you still want that, especially at a screw like this, you do not want that screw to be moving uh, from apart. When you're screwing a, this, you're basically putting the screw in here, you're screwing this part into something else, into another block, for example. So basically, you definitely do not want this screw to be moving. Now, because of this mate, I limit it to the, the movement of my part. So for example, uh, I'm gonna click on X right here real quick. For example, I can rotate my screw by going left and right. I can still do that and I can still go up and down with my screw, okay? Because I have not told it, hey, I want that screw all the way down. I haven't, I haven't told it that. I haven't made it anything like that. All I did is I told it that if I place this in my top view, that part will always be concentric to these. So now I can't move my part over here at all. I can rotate it if I want to, but I can't move it like that. But if I put it in the front view, I can move my part up and down and into here. Okay, um, so the next thing I wanna do is I want to make this surface at the bottom of this surface right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So click on mate and click on this surface and then rotate your part using the scroll key and then this surface right here. And you're gonna see right away, click on okay over here to accept it. You're gonna see right away the screw moves all the way down. So if I click on the front view and now it's flush. So now there's one thing I wanna show you uh, in this session and I wanna click on the X right here to exit my mating. 
if you click on your part, you have some options over here that are really nice. One of them is suppress, okay? One of them is a uh, view mate. There's a mate over here option. And one of them is change transparency. So if you click on change transparency, SolidWorks will change your transparency of that part. So you're able to view what is inside that part. So I'm gonna go back to my front view and look at that. The screw fits perfect. So I know SolidWorks wizard knew exactly what they were doing. And look at that, the part is almost flush to the top surface, which is exactly what we wanted. And that's how a socket head cap screw should be done. And then the part goes through here. And of course, it needs to be extended because it's this is a screw and it needed to be screwed into another part. So there's a threaded part at the bottom over here. For example, if we would have made another part that this screw would be going into a threaded spot. Okay, and so that's how you made it. Now, remember, we can still rotate this. Okay, so as long as you can still move it around, you cannot actually, uh, the part will not be under defined or fu uh, fully defined. So if we want this to be fully defined, for example, click on this axis right here, which is part of the screw. Click on mate. That's another way to start a mating section is because you got your uh, a, a section selected, a feature selected. It selects it for you right away. Now let's go ahead and select this line right here. And what that does is SolidWorks gives uh, makes this line and this line parallel because when it, whenever it look, takes two lines it thinks that you're trying to make them parallel and it's exactly what we want click on okay over here and if you look down now your part is fully defined now i cannot move this part i'm going to click on okay to exit i can move my screw no matter where i try to move it so that means this screw is stationed and this part is stationary and if I want to place this part back to a normal view, I can come over here and click on change transparency and it will change my transparency. Okay, another thing you can do is click on the part and click on suppress. Suppressing the part will make that part disappear. So that's the difference between suppressing a part and making it. Now to get that part to appear again, you got to go over here to the left side and you're going to notice that now the part is grayed out when it's suppressed. So you got to click on it again and click on suppress and that will create your part uh, make your part appear again over here. Okay, so the transparency feature is really nice and definitely very useful uh, in SolidWorks. So definitely make use of that, especially when you're doing things like this to make sure that your part fits in there correctly.